Hello, I'm Keelan. And I'm Charlie, and this is Halftime. If you enjoy watching, playing, or hearing anything about sports, then you better keep watching, because this is the show for you. That's right, Charlie. Especially as this week, we're having a special London 2012 Olympic celebration right here at Halftime, coming to you live from the TV studios at the University of Bedfordshire. Millions, if not billions of pounds, has been spent to bring the Olympics to London. So we're going to go behind the scenes and show you just what goes on for athletes around Great Britain. England has produced many sporting greats over the years, even if we say so ourselves. But where are they trained? And who trains them? We went to Birmingham and talked to boxing coach Frank O'Sullivan, who's taught people like Ricky Hatton and Amir Khan and many other boxing greats. Here he is, giving us a little bit more insight. With a 54-year track record behind him, Frank O'Sullivan has brought through many champions for Great Britain, such as Ricky Hatton and Amir Khan. In 1956, his eyesight prevented him from boxing professionally, so he set up his own amateur gym where we went to meet him. Boxing in the Olympics consists of three three-minute rounds. So that's nine minutes in the ring. How dangerous is that exactly? Boxing is not a dangerous sport, and there are many reasons for that. The worst injury I've seen really is, is a broken nose and, and, and a fractured hip bone. Apart from that, nothing else in 55 years. Frank is currently coaching Birmingham whiz kid Khaled Yafai, who is eager to follow in the footsteps of Amir Khan. When you get a little kid who comes in here, when you develop him and, and you see him progress through the years, and sometimes even, you know, sort of making something, you know, out of himself. Um, and again, we're also proud of this our city of ours. And, and even if we don't make champions, we also help to provide better citizens for him within our city. Female boxers can be in three weight divisions, flyweight, lightweight and middleweight. From the outset, the first year I went into boxing, I had a national champion and a, a runner-up. And since then, we've produced champions. Last month, one of our boxers, Khalid Yafai, qualified for the Olympics. However, <coughs> so did Andrew Selby from Wales. So, next month, the 11th and 12th of next month, they'll have a box off at York Hall in London uh, to see who goes to represent GB in the, uh, in the Olympics 2012. to learn that that coach has dedicated all his time to helping young boxers. Now I have an interesting fact for you. Frank has just recently received an MBE from Her Majesty the Queen for over 50 years of service to the community. And on another note, we are going to switch over to gadgets now. Today we have Half Times gadget expert Fiaz Ali in the studio with us, who's been in the sporting business for more than five years. Hi Fiaz, what have you brought along for me today? Well, we have some fitness gadgets. Okay, uh, and what is this one you've brought for us? This is called a power bar. The power bar. Power bar, power which bar. Okay. works the chest, the biceps, and the forearms at the same right. time. Even a little bit of the back and traps as well. Ooh. Nice. Pretty much an upper body workout. Okay. And how it's done, you just hold it out, yeah, okay. and you just like want to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And okay. You just want to pull it down, so you want to bend it. So you're bending metal there. Yeah, pretty much. Brilliant. Fantastic. Can I have a go? So yeah, sure. In. Okay. So, okay. Uh, so what? Do you want to turn it right? There we go. You need. To, yeah. Hold on. Now turn it a bit more. Oh, there we go. That's the way. Oh, That's the way. Like yeah. Okay. Ready? Yep. And how many reps of this? Would you say it's worth? Oh my goodness! A day? Well, I go to the gym, but this is this is really you can feel it all on your upper arms. Yeah. Well, okay. normally I would say about fi uh, five sets of ten reps, but I'm gonna stick with three. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Keelan. Nice Christmas present for you there. I'm gonna stick that in your Christmas list. Oh, I think it's enough. Oh, oh, I can feel that. I feel that already. Brilliant. Okay, what else have you brought? Uh, I've got an app that um, is good for people who can't actually get to the gym. 
Okay. Uh, so it actually shows workouts that you can do at home. Getting all technical now. This yeah. is an app, okay. And um, what, what sort of so exercises this, can we see? Well, this app basically gives you uh, just a list of exercises that you can do. Okay. Uh, this is a morning workout, so we'll start with the march. Okay. And it has a preview of what Ooh, it looks like. Look at that. Interactive little people. <laughs> Fantastic. What other things have we got in here is our march? Uh, Obviously, that's quite a simple so that's one. The march. Um, uh, what's, oh, what's the windmill? That looks quite exciting. Let's click yeah, on that go one. For it. Okay. Oh. Press play. Oh, okay. I see. That's more feet Stretches. Yeah. Abs. Brilliant. I imagined, you know. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Windmill. Brilliant. Okay. Looks like I have to get this for my iPhone. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah. If I just give that back to you. Yeah, Thank sure. you so much for coming into the Thank studio you. today. And um, we're going to pass back to Keelan now. Christmas present for you, Keelan, I think. Fitness bar sounds like a great idea, especially when I'm too busy to get to the gym. Now, you may or may not have heard of a certain athlete taking both the Olympics and Paralympics by storm. He goes by the name of Oscar Pistorius, also known as the Blade Runner, because of his, his extraordinary carbon fibre artificial limbs. With such amazing and inspirational people such as Oscar, we wondered why we didn't know a bit more about the Paralympics. So, we went and spoke to Emily Fordham, who has over 90 medals and trophies altogether, despite having cerebral palsy, to try and find out a little bit more about the Paralympic Games. The Paralympic Games are a major international multi-sport event where athletes with a physical disability compete. We went to Luton and spoke with two young disabled athletes who are very excited about the upcoming Paralympics. Hi, my name is Nathan Green. Um, I am an above, leg, above knee amputee. Um, it's called fibula, yeah, fibula syndrome and I also have a missing finger which is called ulnar syndrome on both my arms. I have been to many major competitions like the nationals. I've been four times now, but I've been regionals five and with my swimming I've also been nationals and regionals before so yeah, I've been around a lot. But I would love to be in the Paralympics or the Olympics. It's just a bonus in the end of the day. The first Winter Paralympic Games were held in Sweden in 1976. They were the first games to feature athletes other than those wheelchair bound. Now the games allow competitors with a broad array of disabilities to take part. There are 20 sports in the Paralympic programme for the London 2012 Games, which include wheelchair rugby, Paralympic judo, five-a-side football and sitting volleyball. We went to Stevenage and met with a disabled athletics group and a girl called Emily who has cerebral My palsy. I'm Emily Fordham and I do mainstream and disability athletics and I have roughly about 90 medals in my bedroom and five trophies. I prefer doing the running like the 100 and 200 but I also like doing the shot put as well. Half the medals I got was from doing mainstream competitions like running and the shot put and then my other half were from disability doing 100, 200 in the shot and long jump and discus and relays. <laughs> I do, so. Yeah. But it's my, it was my last year, so I can't do it anymore now. So I'm a bit upset about that. She's been training hard to hopefully one day join the Paralympic Athletic Squad. However, this year she found out that her current condition did not meet the minimal disability criteria. If you're interested in finding sports centres and teams in your area, whether you have a disability or not, check out our website or add us on Facebook, Half Time. about you but I think it's absolutely inspirational what those young children have achieved. Yeah I mean I'm able-bodied and they're more sporty than me. Now in the studio we have Az Roshdi who is a personal fitness expert. He studied sports science for a number of years and has worked as a physician for many great sporting clubs. Hello Az, how Hello. are you? I'm good thanks, how are you guys doing? Thank Not you for joining us today. Brilliant. Good. Okay, so we have a couple of questions we want to ask you. Cool. We've been talking uh, behind the scenes today. Um, we would like to know, what does a professional athlete have to do to keep fit? Simple, work hard and be very committed to their sport. And to achieve their goals, they also need to have a strict diet as well because the diet is almost as important as the intensive training. Okay, so what sorts of things are you eating? Fish, proteins? I mean, just healthy foods in general, really. Just like a lot of like wheat bread instead of white bread works well. Okay. And simple things like that. A lot of eggs, a lot of protein, as you just said. And yeah, just a lot of meat. It also depends on your goals, what you're looking to achieve. But 
Just try and stay away from like frozen foods, processed foods and ready meals and takeaways because you don't know what's in them. So yeah. it's always best to make your own food because then you actually know what's in it. You make you know it from what they scratch, say. you know it's fresh. You are what you exactly, eat. exactly. Um, and this is a particularly interesting question. We were talking about this in the studio earlier. How long does it actually take to prepare for an Olympic game? It takes a very, very long time in all honesty. I mean, a lot of people are scouted from a young age because they've started at, say, the age of seven, maybe even younger than that. They get scouted, say in football, clubs like Barcelona and Real Madrid, they scout their players from a very, very young age. As young as seven, that's that yeah. ridiculous. But that's amazing. There are amazing. a lot of great footballers at seven. And because yeah. it's, I mean, when you're younger, it's easier to sort of not so much understand things, but to get into things a lot yeah, better. You pick it up a lot quicker, don't yeah. you? Yeah, definitely. Um, for the viewers at home, obviously we love the gym, don't we? But for the viewers at home, we've had some questions people have been writing in. What can you do at home without going to the gym to keep fit? I mean a lot of simple things they say is like a fitness DVD but I don't personally believe in those. I'm not so much for staying in the house, I'm more for going out, having a long walk, maybe even a brisk jog. I mean simple things like going up the stairs as opposed to using the elevator. Yeah. Getting off a few stops earlier on the bus Getting to enjoy the air. fresh air, air yeah. in your lungs, yeah, have a nice like walk. A very good idea. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for coming in the studio Cheers. today. It's it was been a lovely, pleasure. Lovely speaking to you. Nice to meet you, Az. Now, if you're like us and you're not real Olympians and you don't really eat like you're supposed to either, then keep watching because coming up next are the do's and don'ts on eating right. So if you haven't already, press that record button and keep this on your planner for next time you feel like you might need a little bit extra guidance. Plus, you get to watch our beautiful faces all over again. First on nutrition to find out what foods are good for your body and which ones you should avoid. Jelly tots, jammy dodgers, chocolate covered fingers, wagon wheels and, and chocolate chip cookies and so on and so forth. These things are not great for you, okay? The reason nuts and vegetables are great for the body, one, you're getting your protein, two, you're getting your carbohydrates and three, you're getting your fat. These are the building blocks of your hominid species, your organic, your organic process, your organic metabolism in itself. Without these, your body's going to start breaking down. Fine, your body will store certain things in certain quantities. However, you still need to be replenishing your body because there is a, there is a nutritional demand that even a caloric demand that even your brain makes on a daily basis. 20% of the calories that your body takes, take, that, that, that your body uses, is used up by your brain. That's just it enervating your central nervous system setting up the programs for you to walk upstairs, walk up and down, wake up, get out of your bed even, okay, making even a pot of tea. There's a, there's a, there's a movement program that everybody goes through that has a caloric demand over, over, over time. Okay, so think to yourself, you need this, this calorie intake. The best sources are your, 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 your proteins for your, from your meat and your fish, okay, chicken, salmon, okay, your carbohydrates you're going to be getting from, from things like your, 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 your wheat, your rye vita and your cereals and so on, bran flakes, corn flakes or whatever it may be, okay, your, your protein you'll get also from your milk, whether, whether, whether it's, it's goat's milk, cow's milk or even soya milk, okay, your vitamins you're going to be getting from things like your bananas and your, your fruit and your, your, your apples and so on, and you'll get your carbohydrates again from your, from, your, from your potatoes, okay. To find out more about eating healthily and about nutrition, go onto our website or search for Half Time on Facebook. I don't care how low they are in fat, Charlie, you can't eat those marshmallows. But they are perfect on my hot chocolate. What else am I going to use? Fruit, maybe? Chocolate orange? <sighs> That's it for the show today. Thanks for watching this Olympic special. And make sure you tune in next time to Half Time. He's been Keelan Cosgrove. She's been Charlie Tisma. And you've been delightful. delightful. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>